Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining in. If you are joining in live, thank you for taking some time on Thanksgiving Eve to come to our Hello Note 2.0 webinar. This webinar will be recorded, of course, so we will be sharing the, uh, the link. Um, if you RSVP'd, uh, we're going to send it over to you, and we're also going to post it in our blog as well. So I do want to thank everyone, of course, uh, whether you are a Hello Note client now or you're considering Hello Node, uh, we are excited to showcase 2.0. The goal of this webinar is to show the difference between uh, 1.0, if you know about it, and 2.0. So one of the questions we always get is, how do I know if I'm, if I'm on Hello Node 2.0? So this webinar shouldn't leave you with any doubt. If you are on Hello Node 2.0, you will know because the interface is different. And if you're on 1.0, you will be migrated soon based on um, your either priority request um, or eventually we're going to migrate everyone. So to those, I just want to introduce myself to those that don't know me. My name is Steve Gluck. I am an occupational therapist and I am the CEO of Hello Note. So we've been, uh, we've had Hello Note since inception already uh, about 10 years now. So we're excited um, to now launch our Hello Note 2.0 which has been about three years in the making. So not an easy task uh, to create a whole new uh, platform and migrate all the data from Hello Note 1.0 onto 2.0. Uh, we appreciate all of our clients that have migrated already and gave us the feedback. It is invaluable because we learn from that feedback and we make changes and updates based on it. So we are doing our best to make sure it's smooth um, and if you have any questions on that, please reach out. We'll be happy to, to go over that. With that being said, everyone that's being migrated is going to have a link that we share. So I have it in a new tab here. So these are the Hello Note 2.0 account migration steps. So if you are currently on Hello Note 1.0, please take some time to review this. If you don't have this link yet, uh, no need to worry. We're going to send it to you before your migration. Okay, so for example, this weekend, we are having offices migrate. So all of those offices should have received this link. Okay, and again, we, we listen to when the migration is good for you as far as timing goes. So if you're not ready to migrate yet, no worries at all. You don't have to migrate. So just let us know you're not ready to migrate. We won't migrate you, and we'll put you on a schedule that works for you. And because we don't want to take this whole system down for a week. We are doing our best to migrate over the weekend. Because okay? over the weekend is usually when there's downtime on, on your end, so you don't have to pull up patient schedules or do notes, things like that. So we are doing our best to migrate over the weekend. And because we're migrating over the weekend, it gives us less time to migrate. Okay, and because we have less time to migrate, the migration does take place over the span of a few weeks. However, over that weekend, your migration date, your notes, your schedule, your user accounts will all be migrated. So you shouldn't feel any, any of the effects of any data not migrated over, but we do ask for a couple weeks afterwards just to kind of catch up on any, uh, any kind of outstanding things. So, so this link right here will be shared to you. Uh, one of the first things I want to mention is the URL. The login URL is different. Okay, so you won't be able to use the original link. So if you have our link saved, so please make sure either your bookmarks or favorites, you're going to update that. Okay, uh, if you forget, there's no need to worry because if you try to log in, it's going to tell you your office um, is inactive or something like that. So you'll be you'll know that you're not logging into the right link. Also, once we finish the full migration, we will be bringing back that original link anyway. So this is all just temporary until we get everyone migrated over. So on the, if you scroll down a little bit here, to the left, we have a few little tabs here. First tab is called First Login. Then we have User Settings, Patient Actions, Adding a New Patient, Scheduling, and FAQ. So these are important because to the right of that, it's going to have a little interactive uh, demo where if you click, for example, logging in for the first time, get started, 
actually going to give you these little blue hot links to click on, which is really nice. So it just kind of orients you to how to log in. So first step, click on Open ID Connect. Then it brings you to the login screen. And then you're going to put in your new password. Okay, and I do want to mention that your first login to 2.0 will require a password change. So our engineers did a wonderful job to make sure that you don't have to get a new login because that was a big concern for a lot of clients. They didn't want to change their login. So what they did is they kept the login. They'll allow you to log in one time, and then you just change your password for security, and that's going to fully migrate your account to 2.0. You're going to repeat the password twice, log in, and once you're logged in, at that point, you can then log in. Sorry, you can log out. You can click on the top right and press log out. And now you can log in from the main screen. No need to click on that Open ID Connect. Okay, so it's a one-step uh, one step process to do that. You don't have to do that again. Once you're logged into 2.0, that's it. You don't have to go through that process again. Okay, so on the left side, go into User Settings. Same thing, it's a little interactive tutorial on how to change your password and things like that. Um, also, patient actions. Okay, and then we have adding new patients, scheduling, and then an FAQ. Okay, so I do recommend you go through all that. And I will go over all of these as well during this webinar. I just want to make sure everyone is aware of this, um, this step. It is important. Um, we did have a few clients that did not follow this step, so they reached out and we helped them log into 2.0. Again, there's no issues. We're always here to help, uh, and we're trying our best to make sure this is as uh, seamless as possible. So uh, let me go and click on our Hello Note 2.0 dashboard link here. So again, I want to thank every before I go over uh, Hello Note 2.0 a little bit. Again, I want to thank. Uh, thank everyone who joined in. Um, I want to thank our whole team, including our engineers, the support team, onboarding team, our uh, demo team, um, affiliates. Uh, you know, we work really hard to bring this product together. Um, it's not easy. EMRs have a ton of different features, and that's what makes our job exciting, but also not easy because there's so many different components. But we do understand the importance of every single one, so we do our best to make sure you have all the features at your disposal and we don't charge you extra for little things that we add on. You know, we, we built Hello Note based on community feedback. So, so many features were built just simply by feedback of another clinic. Okay, that's the culture we try to build here, where if you have a suggestion, bring it over to us and we're going to take that feedback and bring it into Hello Note. And it's awesome to hear a lot of clients say, I never thought about this feature, or I had this idea, I never knew how to implement it, and then we bring it to life, and it's, just, it's great. And at the end of the day, anything that can save you time as either clinicians or practice owners or billers, uh, we will always step in and try to build out a feature that works. Okay, so, so no suggestion is too small, too big. Please let us know, and uh, we love to work with every single one of you. And of course, without you, there would be no Hello Note. So we are very grateful, especially on this Thanksgiving. Uh, we're very grateful for the team we have and all of you as partners in service with Hello Note. Uh, so I'll, I'll begin going over the Hello Note 2.0 interface a little bit. Um, there is a Q&A section in the Zoom. So if you put your questions in here, uh, they will be answered by Lisa. Lisa is uh, one of our team members and she will be answering them along the webinar. And then anything that's left over or there's a specific question she wants me to answer live, I will answer live as well. So we'll save that till the end. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll begin. So thank you all. And again, this will be recorded. So if you have to step out um, or you didn't get a chance to make it, um, you'll, you'll have a recording. So upon the first login uh, to Hello Note 2.0, uh, you will see here a dashboard. And a lot of this will be familiar from Hello Note 1.0. That was one of our goals, is to make sure you do not have to relearn a brand new system. Because EMRs are 
pretty complex. There's a lot of features happening. So our goal was not to make you relearn a new system. Our goal was to keep a lot of uh, a lot of components where they are. Yes, there might be visual changes or button might be not on the left side, on the right side, or something like that. But if you know Hello Note 1.0, you should have no issues with Hello Note 2.0. So the dashboard here looks almost similar to 1.0. Um, of course, there's a little bit of color differences. If I scroll down, you still have your widgets here, which are mini reports. So we have here, for example, our draft notes, pending cosign, Planet Care's meeting renewal. And of course, we will be adding more and more little reports as well for your convenience. The one thing that Hello Note uh, 1.0 doesn't have that 2.0 has is the ability to control what's on your dashboard. So we will give you the ability to modify which reports you want to see, uh, which I think will be awesome. You can build your own KPI dashboards, things like that. And if you are a clinic owner, the reports for you will be different than if you are a therapist. If you're a therapist and you have no need to see some of the reports, then those reports will not be available to you. You'll have your own dashboard that you can build out. So things like pending cosign, draft notes, uh, plan of care renewal might be important for you. So we have that built out. So on the top, you'll notice that on Hello Note 1.0, our main navigation was on the top. So you would have the Patients tab, Schedule tab, and so on. So it's no longer on the top. So now it's relocated to the left side. So you'll see here these, uh, these little icons. And if I put my mouse over the left side navigation bar, you'll notice that it expands. Okay, so this is where the dashboard, patient schedule, and so on buttons are. Okay, if I take my mouse out of the left side, it's going to collapse again. Okay, so once I bring it in, it expands and has the full text. So I know this is the dashboard, patient, schedule, billing, and so on. So also, I do have the option to make this sticky. So if I click on the top, you'll see this uh, double arrows here. If I click on that, you'll notice that now it kind of reformatted the, the navigation, and it's going to now stick, which means I don't have to slide in and out. I just put my mouse on the left side, and it's going to be there. Okay, so personally, I prefer it collapsible, so it gives me more room for the middle section that includes notes and wherever else I'm on. So, for example, if I go on the left and now I click Patients, it's going to bring me to my patient list. Okay, so this is our main user interface, which again, if you know Hello Note 1.0, you'll notice some similarities already. Okay, so the patient list is on the left. Okay, and then to the right of that, we have the main navigation or windows with the patient, inf uh, patient information, if we scroll down, emergency contact, referral section, and so on. So once again, if you go to the left, you can change the navigation, or I can click on those double arrows, and it's going to reformat my interface and leave the navigation kind of there so I don't have to slide in and out. So let me collapse that again. So from here, um, that is your navigation on the left side instead of the top. So that's one of the main differences is the navigation changed. So now you also will see on the top right, we do still have some options here, right? So even though it's not going to have the patient tab, reports, and so on, there's still some other important buttons here. One of those buttons is a bell. So this is a really cool new feature called notifications. So if I click on that, it's going to tell you, for example, if there's anything due on your account. Um, it's going to also tell you if there's taxes that were successful, like e-faxes were successful, uh, not successful, appointment reminders that went out, and so on. So think of it kind of like a social media notifications where somebody you know, sends you or tags you on something or somebody's birthday, whatever the case is, it's going to appear. So we're actually expanding on this now. Uh, we want as much information as possible here, which will be really nice. And then there will also be an email option. So this way you don't have to log into Hello Note to know if there's a notification or event that is due. To the right of that, there's also something called a chat. So I don't have it enabled on my dummy account here, 
uh, but it is enabled on some of the uh, clients that migrated. So this is kind of like an instant messaging feature. It is HIPAA compliant, which is awesome. You can message your therapist or administrators and so on. So you'll get a notification if somebody messaged you. Uh, next is the opportunity to change from light mode to dark mode. If that's, uh, you know, you're doing notes or something at night, you might like dark mode better. To the right of that, it's going to have your username. Uh, so if you click on your username, so it's going to show you a little bit of details about your account. And then a really easy way to either change your password. It's going to show you any login attempts. Okay, so with Hello Note 2.0, we are improving security as well. So we, we are HIPAA compliant. We want to make sure there's no, nobody has access to your account. So you can actually see login attempts from your account, um, including the IP address, um, location, and so on. You could change your profile picture. Um, and you also have this called My Settings. So in Hello Note 1.0, uh, this was located in the Settings user account. In 2.0, it's more convenient. If you click on My Settings, so you could actually change uh, your information here. That includes anything from your profile, your address, any other information, the rate. Um, and what's new with 2.0 as well is you can actually put in your e-signature directly on the system as opposed to using those e-signature forms. So this is actually one of the features I'm most excited about because you guys don't have to reach out to us or fill out a form for an e-signature. If there's a new therapist that joined your team, they have full control over adding their own e-signature. And uh, once they save it, it's going to apply to their note. We also are applying license numbers to the e-signature. So if you print out a PDF, it's going to have the signature, of course, your name with your credentials and your license number. Okay, so that is, uh, uh, I think that's a really cool component as well. Uh, and there's also configurations that we're working on that includes um, schedule changes, uh, notifications and things like that. So, so yeah, this is the shortcut for settings. So everyone has this and they'll be able to control any settings uh, that is needed. And of course, the log out button is here. But once again, if you need to log out of Hello Note, just like in 1.0, make sure you actually click the log out. Don't just leave your computer. Yes, even though after a certain amount of time, it's going to automatically log you out. You know, you don't want somebody to come to your computer because you have patient information here. So please make sure you click on your username and physically click on the log out button. And if you need to re-log in, of course, you can re-log in. It'll bring you back uh, to Hello Noon. And to the right of that, you do have that dropdown where if you're, lo if you're linked to multiple locations. Okay, so in this case, you see here I have, I'm linked to two locations, one called a demo new and one called Hello Note Office. Okay, so if I switch to another office, it's going to keep me on the page that I'm on and relocate me to that office. So, so those are the top navigation buttons and the left navigation buttons. So those, for the most part, those are the biggest changes that we, we have made. Okay, and remember, Hello Note 2.0 is not just taking 1.0 and building on top of it. Hello Note 2.0 is a brand new system. And the reason we went with a brand new system is so we can scale, we can help you scale, right? That means more integrations, making the system faster, adding new features and things like that. So, uh, and this will allow us to make, uh, to bring more features to life. Because in Hello Note 1.0, when we started, again, the technology was 10 years old. It was great for its time, but technology moves quick. So we wanted to adapt to a new system that's going to allow us to bring more changes quicker without, uh, without adding a whole bunch of cost. Okay, we, you, uh, if you've been with us, you know that we do our best. Uh, we actually haven't had price increases. And, you know, we hope to continue on that path. We want to make sure we're an affordable system and we give you as many features as we can. So, so yeah, that's the navigation side. Um, it's brand new for 2.0, so make sure you orient yourself with it. And I don't think it's going to take too long to, to orient on the navigation side. So now let's look at the patient list. So again, very similar to 1.0. You have the patient search. Uh, we also uh, have this show advanced filters. So if I click on that, 
Now I can filter out the patient list with any statuses. And all of these statuses are controlled by, by you. So if you want to create your own statuses, no problem. You can do that, and I'll show you that a little bit later if you don't know how to do that. Next is therapist. So I can actually filter out the patient list based on the assigned therapist. And I can actually filter out the patient list based on location. So this is also new for 2.0, which is great because you can now consolidate a central location. So if you have multiple locations, you can actually have a central location and then filter out the patient list depending on where you want to be. So this is great for reports and certain other conveniences as opposed to having two separate um, uh, drop downs, which you still have. If you want it, you still have it. But I want to make sure uh, that you know both options are possible. And we do have clients that prefer one over the other. There's no right or wrong. If you prefer to have one location with you know, location A and then switch to location B, no problem. If you want to have everything in a central location and control it in one central location, no problem as well. So we do offer both. So underneath these uh, filters, um, we still retain the PTOTST labels to the left of the patient name. Um, so, so if you know Hello No 1.0, you know that this means that there's an active case. So if we look at, for example, Andrea Jones, that Andrea Jones has PTOT and speech active cases. If we look at Jennifer Smith, only a PT case exists. And remember, this is active case. So if there's a discharge OT case, it's not going to show that icon. And then underneath that, if we look at John Smith, there's no icon. No icon means there's no active cases at this time. And underneath the, uh, the patient names, we did add some more options in 2.0. One of them is the active cases, which we had in Hello No 1.0. So this will actually uh, just... Uh, reformat the list and take away any patients that do not have an active case. Okay. Next is my patients only. So if I only want to see patients assigned to me, I don't care about any other patients, I can check that off. And if you are an administrator or practice owner, you can actually force my patients only on your therapist, meaning you can enable a setting where they will only have access to their own patients. Okay. Uh, we also have a new filter called Today's Patients. So again, you can uh, check this off and any patient scheduled today will appear on the list. And last, we have no notes in over 30 days. So sometimes there, you know, notes can get lost or patients not discharged. So you can filter out the list to see if there's any patients that don't have notes in 30 days. So let me uncheck this. Um, so on the top right of the patient list, there is one new button that Hello Note 1.0 does not have. This is called the new patient. So on Hello Note 1.0, the new patient button was on the right side. Now we put it onto the top of the patient list. So if you want to create a new patient, simply click this button, and then you'll get a pop-up, and you'll have the option to create a patient. And this is more of like a quick add. So you can add any medical record number. And again, this is optional. So what I mean by optional is, let me close out of this for a second. So if I click on a patient, for example, if I click on Jennifer Smith, you'll notice on the top right, sorry, on the top left, uh, you'll have a patient ID number in parentheses. So very similar to, to 1.0, we automatically generate a patient ID number. Um, this ID number on Hello No 2.0 is a little bit longer than 1.0. And again, that's for added security. So, so it is here. And what's awesome about the patient ID number is it acts as your medical record number. So you do not have to put that in. And then if you ever need to email someone or reference a patient, you just use the patient ID number. Like, for example, if I paste in this ID number here, notice that it just brought me right to this patient. Okay, so no need to have to worry about you know, PHI or anything like that always use the patient ID number for communication to keep everything HIPAA compliant. So, uh, so once again, I'm going to click that add new patient just for a second. So you of course have the opportunity to put in the first and last name and that's the only required field. Okay. So our goal 
is also to make sure you can do whatever it is you need to do from your practice management side as quickly as possible. So let's say you get a new patient that calls and you need to schedule them right away. You don't have all the details yet, but at least you want to put them on the schedule. So you can do that right from here. So put in the first name, last name, save, everything else you can you can edit after. Okay. Uh, so you have uh, patient statuses here. You can select the primary care physician, the gender, date of birth, and any comments. So once you add the patient, it'll appear here. And then on the right side, we have the edit action button. The same as 1.0, the edit button will be on the right side. So if I click edit, you'll notice all the fields now open up. Okay, so if I click cancel on the top right, notice things start to get grayed out. So if I press edit, now all the fields open back up. Okay, so, so let's just take a look here as well because all of these fields are pretty much very similar to 1.0. Uh, there's minor differences, but for the most part, it should be very similar. So on the right side, you'll notice we have this new feature called patient checklist. So this patient checklist will allow you to add different checkboxes for patients. So for example, you wanna keep track of a patient left you a review on Google or they completed intake of consent forms, or they don't want you to mail something to them, um, or you want to do a schedule lock, right? So you want to lock their schedule in place so nobody else can modify it. You can do that right from here. Okay, you can check off the buttons, press save, good to go. Um, so, and we are working on an option for you to add your own. Okay, because again, we understand every office is different. Okay, and that's another reason we built 2.0 is so we can scale with you and for you. So this way we can make the system as dynamic as possible. So this way you can add your own options. You can customize your note templates. You can customize intake and consent forms to what you want and then map it out right into the note. So all of this stuff is coming for 2.0. Some of this stuff is already uh, done, just being tested. So we're excited to launch that and we'll be doing more webinars to, you know, to showcase new features. So to the right of the patient checklist, there are the appointment reminders that this did not go away. You know, this is really important to prevent cancellations. So you can set up email and or SMS reminders. So the way it works is, for example, you want an appointment reminder to go out 48 hours before their scheduled visit. No problem. Leave that like this and save. Patient will get their appointment reminder. Underneath that, you'll notice a uh, new option called phone call. It does say coming soon. So we are working on the option to do an automated phone call for your patients. Again, this is all optional. You, ha you will have all three options. Currently, there's email and SMS, but it's up to you to decide which one works best for you and your patients. So below that, we, of course, have all the information, primary care physician, patient statuses, and to the right of that, to the right of the status, you'll notice that there's a green plus button. So again, you want to add your own status. Just press the green plus button and you can add a new status. Okay. So, so I definitely recommend doing that to keep track of your patient statuses. Uh, so on, uh, below that, we have a remark section so you can put any comments. And then we do have patient alert. So patient alert is similar to what we had in 1.0. Uh, so you can actually put in something like, let's say, I don't know, patient has, patient is high risk for fault. I did, for example. So once I save this, I just want to give you an example. You'll notice on the top, you're going to get this yellow little navigation, not navigation, but it's like a little bubble. Um, and you can move it around. Uh, you can put it on the bottom, leave it at the top. So it's actually going to appear for the patient that you set this patient alert for. Okay, so it's something you want to do specifically for a patient that everyone who accesses this chart needs to know. Okay, it could be that the patient owes a balance or it could be, you know, precaution of the patient or a patient speaks a certain language. Whatever the case is, you can set this up and whoever accesses this patient's chart we'll get this bubble, okay? And even if I switch over to the notes tab or insurance tab, 
you'll notice that it still retains. Okay. Um, and you'll notice it's, it's kind of like bright in your face, but that's the goal. We want to make sure that nobody's going to ignore it. And if you do want to kind of close out of it, you just click on the X and it's going to disappear. And if you want it back, you'll notice there's a little red um, eye indicator. So if I click on it, it's going to come back. And if I switch to a different patient, this, uh, this you know, bubble will go away unless the patient has, the next patient you select has its own alert. So scrolling down, uh, again, similar to 1.0, emergency contact information, uh, refer, um, referred, referral section here, you can put in the referred by and so on. So what's cool here is also you can put in something like uh, Facebook. Let's say you're running Facebook ads for your patients. Let's say you put something in the newspaper ad. Let's say you hired a digital marketing company. Whatever you, you know, whatever you have or as far as referral sources, you can tag here, and then I'll show you a little bit later reports. Okay, so reports are really important, and then you can track which referrals you're getting for which patients, how many referrals, um, and so on. Because not all, not all the time your your referrals are going to come from a medical practitioner, right? And you want to keep track of that. So, so this is really important. And underneath that, you have the patient events. The patient events um, we had in 1.0. So this is where you can put in a patient event and you can set a reminder to remind you. So again, instead of using um, your phone or sticky pads or you know, Excel, whatever you use for reminders, you can keep everything within Hello Node. It's HIPAA compliant, and you actually get a remind date and time right here. You can set, and the system will alert you when this reminder is due. You can also tag another user. So let's say let's say you have a biller, right, that's working with you. You can actually you know set up a reminder for the biller to check eligibility or something like that, or rebill a patient. Or, you know, it's up to you to use it however you want, but um, but it's but I think this is an awesome you know, opportunity to keep everything um, in, within Hello Note in a HIPAA compliant manner. So now you will notice that there's no add button, add event button. Okay, so in 1.0, we did have a add button here. On 2.0, it's located on the top. Um, these are, you notice these sub navigation buttons here to the left of edit. So one of them to the left of edit is this create event. So the reason we did that is because we felt like a lot of users did not know about the events or underutilized it, uh, but on those that use it, say it's a lifesaver and they wouldn't be able to, to use the system without it because there's just so many opportunities to keep track of notes, even things like faxing a plan of care. Right? I know a lot of you use uh, communication notes, but you can actually create a patient event and you don't have to set a reminder. Right? You don't have to use patient events specifically for reminders. You can just leave it here for a historical log of what happened. So, so it's up to you. For example, if you want to keep track of plan of cares, you can do it here. Or you can do a communication note, but we did bring the button to the top. So this way more users know that this function exists. So, uh, so when I create a new patient event, I can select the type, right? Uh, let's, and it could be anything. It's it's your call what you want to do. Let's say the patient missed a visit. Uh, you can tag that here. You can put a status. Uh, you can, of course, set the remind date and time. Uh, you can select another user to, to tag. Uh, select the case that it belongs to. Uh, and again, it's optional. You don't have to select the case. Put in the comment, remark, or reminder, whatever you want to do. Press save, and it's there for you. So now let's look at all the remaining buttons here. Uh, so first button is called Dictation Service. So if you click on this on your phone, it's actually going to open up a dialer, and you can call our dedicated line for Dictation Service. Uh, we are working on um, artificial intelligence tool and tracking as well. So you can actually record a note directly in Hello Note, or if you want to call. Uh, so that's a service. Um, uh, that currently the call is available. The within Hello Note dictation is still pending. Uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of cool opportunities with AI. We're exploring different things. Um, but this is a cool option if you 
want to leave us a message with the patient's note, and then you know, we'll transcribe it for you into a draft note. We're not going to finalize a note for you, but we'll transcribe it. And then once, for example, let's say you're seeing patients or you, let's say you see all patients in their home, right? On your drive back to your next patient using, of course, Bluetooth, um, you can call us, leave a message with what you did with the patient, any details. And then by the time you get to your computer, the note is in draft and you can modify whatever you need to modify and finalize it. So that's a cool option here. Um, also, I mentioned this is available on the phone. Uh, so Hello Note 2.0, uh, one of, again, one of the reasons we decided to go with a brand new platform is because Hello Note 2.0 is much, much better suited for mobile devices and smaller tablets and things like that. So it's a lot more user-friendly, um, and we will also be launching an app as well. So there's a lot of cool stuff to look forward to, but even the cloud-based Hello Note on 2.0 is much more user-friendlier than 1.0 is. You'll be able to use it on your phone, even without an app. Like I access Hello Note from my phone all the time, 2.0, and I, I navigate it with no issues. So when you do notes, yes, there's a lot more things to click on, but 2.0 is more designed for mobile friendliness uh, than 1.0. Next option is called the intake and consent form. So this is a really cool option. Um, so if you click on send intake consent forms, you can select from a bank of consent forms, a bank of intake forms. You can put in some instructions for your patients and press save. The patient will get a text message and email with the link and they'll be able to, uh, to sign whatever document needs to be signed and fill that in. So I do have an example here I wanna bring up. So, Typically, you'll get, the patient will get an email, but I'm going to open the link directly here. So, again, we, we want to keep things HIPAA compliant. So, once the patient opens the link, it's going to ask them to confirm their date of birth. So, I'm going to put that in. Let's confirm. So, once the identity is confirmed, it's going to tell them to click Next to proceed. And they can actually click on the links as well. Uh, so, on the left side, all of the uh, intake and consent forms will be listed here. So for example, if I click new patient intake form, uh, they'll be able to see this and they can modify it. So once they get to the bottom, for example, they will have the option to, to sign, okay? And then they press next, and then it's gonna give them a notification that if they wanna submit, they click on the submit button. So, one of the things that um, that we're almost uh, done implementing is actually mapping these fields right into the notes and right into the patient chart. So, for example, if a patient puts in their medical history, you can send this out before you saw the patient, and then once you do your notes, it's actually going to auto-populate there. So it's going to save you a ton of time, and that includes also like insurance information, diagnosis codes, whatever the case is. Um, it's going to be really cool, and you'll be able to control which fields uh, you want the, pa the patient to answer. And based on those questions, it's going to map directly into the patient chart without you having to, to manually put that in. So we're, we're really excited to launch that. Um, and then they can actually do this uh, from your website. We're working on a schedule widget, which will adapt to your website, and a patient can, a, a patient can schedule. It's going to let you know, of course, that the patient is trying to schedule for this visit. Um, and then they can actually fill out the intake and consent forms right from the website and then fill everything in for you without you having to do that. So, so that's a pretty cool feature that we're going to be launching soon. Uh, so again, once again, once the patient completes all of the forms, uh, they have the option to submit. And once they click on submit, it's actually going to go and upload a copy of all the forms directly into the Documents tab. Okay, so I'm gonna skip a little bit here. I'm just gonna click Documents tab to show you. So currently in this patient's chart, I have uh, just a referral in here, but once they submit the document, it's gonna upload here, and it's gonna have either for your reference or the patient's reference if they signed up to the patient portal. So that's also a really cool 
uh, feature. So back to the patient information, next tab is called the request referral link. So if I click request referral, you do have a drop down to select which discipline uh, you wanna have the referral request for. You select the provider, you know, whoever it is, and then you can add a, a little cover letter or whatever you want here, you can attach cover letter. Um, you can also include any additional information. So once you press save, it's gonna e-fax this uh, referral request for this patient um, to the provider of your choice, whoever it is, and then they e-fax it back to you, and of course you can upload that directly to the chart. So this will save you a ton of time not having to manually fax a referral request or even call a doctor's office to request a referral. Um, again, I recommend using this only if you have a relationship already with this provider. You shouldn't use this if you know, the medical, pro uh, whoever you're requesting a referral doesn't know who you are. Maybe for the first time you wanna actually call them, um, but then afterwards I think this is an awesome time-saving feature. Uh, from here we have the next option called Send Review Link. So this automates your online presence with the uh, reviews. So let's say Google reviews, right? Um, so you can give us your Google review link. And once you click this button, it's gonna send a text and email to your patient. And then once they fill out you know, positive review for you, hopefully positive review, then you can go into their chart and you can check off review left and not have to bother the patient again for a review. Right, so this is a great way to boost your online presence and marketing. Next option is enroll to patient portal. So just click on that if you want your patient to be enrolled in the portal. Uh, they'll get an email to verify, to click on the verification link. And then, of course, um, they'll be able to log in. Next option is print face sheet. So this just prints out a face sheet for um, the patient based on the demographics. Some, uh, some clients I know use it as a cover letter or something like that. Uh, it's up to you if you want to use it or not. And then we went over the create event. So that is the patient information tab. Again, a lot of stuff here is what we had on 1.0. Some new stuff was added, and of course, more stuff will be added as well, and we'll go over those when the time comes. So next tab is the insurance tab. Uh, this one is very similar to 1.0. So you have the, oh, one difference here, and I know we had a lot of requests for this, is instead of allowing you to start typing right away, uh, we do have an edit button now. So you have to click edit before it allows you to, to start making changes or things like that. So, so I know a lot of you requested that for 1.0. Um, we didn't do it for 1.0, but it's here for 2.0. Um, of course, you can select all the insurances, primary, secondary, tertiaries, ID numbers, co-payment amounts, and so on. I've also noticed there's a little uh, a button, like a ribbon with a check in there. That's called the check eligibility button. So if you have not signed up for that feature yet, I highly encourage you to sign up for it, especially if you are billing Medicare. Uh, it does work for private insurances as well. So for example, if I click on this button, um, this is a dummy account, so of course I don't have uh, access to it, but you'll actually get a little message. And then if you click on the link, it's gonna open up the instructions for using this feature. So this does require enrollment because we, we, we are not a clearinghouse, we integrate with clearinghouse. So we need to uh, integrate your NPI into the clearinghouse system and then this feature will work. So you could see here, there's a whole list of different private insurances. Uh, there's a whole bunch of Medicaid state insurances and of course, Medicare. Um, Medicare just has one um, eligibility ID number here, which is great. Uh, which means it works for all all states. So you don't have to worry about if your state is not on a list. So so this is a great feature. I highly recommend uh, reaching out if you haven't had this feature. And the reason this feature is, is so great is because once you click on it, it's going to give you a window with the eligibility information. Like I'll use Medicare as an example because it works really well for Medicare. So it's going to tell you, for example, if a patient has Medicare Advantage, if the deductible was met, what's the threshold for PT or OT or speech? Um, it's gonna tell you if there's any secondary payers. It's gonna tell you if there's home health in place. So it's a really awesome feature. Um, so, so I definitely recommend it. And on top of that, 
once it generates the report, you can actually click a button to upload a copy directly into the Documents tab. So no need to click on Download, and Upload, or anything like that. You always have it for reference. So, for example, let's say you ran eligibility, no home health was in place, you saw the patient, and then all of a sudden Medicare denies you and say it says home, he home health was in place. So you can, of course, file an appeal, and you have proof with the date and time stamp of the eligibility request. I definitely recommend um, that feature. So scrolling down a little bit, we have policyholder information. Uh, we also have this payments information. So if you want to add a copayment or deductible or something like that, uh, you'll have the option here. And underneath that, you also have authorization information. So if you want to um, input an authorization, in this case, there's, um, there's one for 15 visits for the whole year. You know, it's attached to the case. So this way, as you're doing notes, if you exceed the number of visits or uh, the scope of the dates, it's going to tell your therapist, you know, you cannot proceed with the note because you don't have authorization. So that is included here. So next tab is the payments tab. Uh, so very similar uh, to 1.0. Uh, there are a few differences here. Uh, so you can select different visit types. And you can control the visit types. So if I click on the plus button, I can add my own visit type. I can add a color, you know, whatever color you want. You can add packages, save it, and this way it's going to keep track for you. And on the schedule, the color will appear based on the visit type you selected, which is pretty cool. Uh, so this place is where you can click on the pay button on the top right. It's actually going to um, do credit card processing. So we are integrated with a credit card processing company. So if that's something that you need, if you need merchant uh, services, there's no extra charge on our side. Uh, you sign up um, with, uh, we use Card Connect. So if you sign up, uh, they're going to uh, they're gonna set you up with a device if you need and all the credentials. And once you are signed up, we input your credentials into HelloNote, and then you can pay directly from HelloNote. Uh, one feature that is, uh, is almost done that we're working on, we're excited about, is the opportunity to save credit cards. So right now, uh, on HelloNote 1.0, if you you can charge credit cards directly from HelloNote, uh, but because of compliance, we did not save the card. In HelloNote 2.0, we actually have a way to save it, and we pull that card. Uh, and you can also set up recurring charges. So if there's, uh, I don't know, let's say you have a private pay patient that wants to be on a monthly plan with you or something like that, you can set that up. We also have a feature to pass on the credit card fee to your patient. So, for example, let's say the credit card fee is 2.7%. So instead of you paying that 2.7%, you can add a setting where once you charge the patient, it's going to add that 2.7% automatically. Of course, the patient has to consent to that. So, uh, and we have a sample consent form for that as well. Um, but yeah, we have that feature, uh, which is uh, which is nice. And then, of course, on the bottom, it's going to give you a list of all the prior transactions. So, so you have that too. Next tab is the visits and receipts tab. Uh, so for visits and receipts, uh, very similar to 1.0. Uh, let me use another patient. Let me just clear out the patient list. I'll just use another one because... I have more data on another patient. So for example, you can see there's four visits here. And I can uh, click on as many visits as I want. And then on the top right, I can click print. And then I can choose to print either uh, the receipt or invoice, the scheduled visits, or the super bill for all these visits, uh, or all. I do have the option to print all. So that is, um, that is of course, available. So to the left of each row, you will have an action button. Uh, so on 1.0, you'll notice that the action button was on the right side. In 2.0, it's on the left side. Okay, so there's a minor change there. So if I click Actions, you do have the option to apply payment. So if I click Apply Payment, I can add the uh, payment type, um, whatever the patient paid, the date that they paid, the what the insurance has paid, patient responsibility, including the type of patient responsibility, and any write-off amount, and so on. I do have this option. And I also have an option for auto balance. 
So let's say, I don't know, for let's say for whatever reason, you have to zero out the balance. So instead of you having to manually figure out that write-off uh, charge, you just click zero out, press save, it's going to zero out the balance. Uh, next option is charge credit card. So in the payments tab, you can input any charge amount and it'll charge the patient. Um, but instead of having to do it from the payments tab, we give you the convenience to do it right from here. So you know the patient has $25 balance, right? Just click charge credit card, input all the details, press submit, it's going to charge them to $25. Uh, there is also something we have called send payment link. Okay, so this is a really cool feature. Also, it's part of the credit card processing system. So let's say the patient doesn't want to give you a card or for convenience, you don't want to have to bother them through a phone call or something like that. If you click send payment link, it's actually going to send a secure link to the patient. It's going to text them and email them, and they will actually be able to pay the bill through that link. Okay, it does not require them signing in anywhere. It just simply gives them a little description of the visit, how much they owe, and uh, they can submit the payment. And then, of course, you get a receipt into your email to let you know that the patient paid, which is nice. And, of course, there's delete visit if you need to delete this uh, scheduled visit. So that uh, that is included. You also have filters on the top. So if you want to filter out different years, uh, different cases, uh, you can also use the balance greater than zero, which is nice. So this way you see only uh, the dates where there is a balance for the patient. So this way you can simply click, press print, print a statement, and um, and show it to the, and give it to the patient. Uh, let's see here. So I think that's it from this side. Uh, so oh, one more thing I want to mention. So right on the visits and receipts tab, you can actually change the case if you need to, or change the provider, uh, change the visit type. You know, whatever you want, even attendance. You can make these changes directly on visits and receipts tab as opposed to going into the schedule, which you can do that on the schedule as well, but sometimes it's quicker here. So that's, uh, that's a nice option. You also have an add button on the top right. So you can actually click on add, and then you can actually add a visit to the schedule. So if you don't want to open the schedule for whatever reason, you can add a patient to the schedule from here. So next tab over, uh, so let me actually use another patient here. So if we go into the notes tab, again, very similar to what we had in 1.0, one of the main differences here is you actually have more icons here. So we wanted to use more icons so we give you more information about the case. So you have this green uh, circle with a check in there. So that's the only thing we actually carried over from 1.0 as far as icons. So this tells you that a case is active. The one below tells you it's a discharge case. So next, you'll see some new icons. The B, the blue B, will tell you that it's a Medicare B case. And on the bottom, it tells you a dollar sign icon says it's a self-pay case. Then you also have a nice indicator if the referral was uploaded, So, which is really cool because sometimes you forget if you have a referral or not. So this way, it'll tell you right away the referral was uploaded. And then we have an icon if there's authorizations, for example, you'll have that. Uh, there are more icons in this example, just uh, you know, for whatever case I have here. Um, but I do know that there's an icon also for um, uh, like plan of care renewals and things like that. So without actually having to go inside the case, you'll actually have icons here. Um, and we are planning to add more icons as well. So. Uh, so if you have any feedback or there's any icons that you would love to see, please let us know and we'll be happy to, to work on it. So to the right, we also have the action button. Again, very similar to 1.0. So you can click view note list to go inside the case. You can click update case to update all the information about the case. Okay. And just to go over this, again, very similar to what we have in 1.0. You can name the case. Um, the insurances. One new feature we added for 2.0 is called direct access. So instead of you having to add direct access into like a referral section, you can do it right from here. Um, so you can also select the therapist, select the case types, and so on. Um, 
one change that we will be making that I, might, I may as well just mention it here. So on the bottom, you will be able to control guidelines. So different billing guidelines like eight-minute rule versus AMA, for example, will allow you to control that. Um, we're also going to have a section, uh, a tab, where you can input ICD-10 codes or medical history and things like that, um, let's say from the patient intake form. So this way you'll be able to see it even before you start a note. So that's going to be a really cool um, option. So once I close out of this, um, the case is already created. So let me uh, just go to view note list. Just want to show what that looks like. Again, very similar here. You also have group actions. So if I click group actions, you'll see here I have a note manager. So note manager is really nice. Uh, because now you have actually the option to archive and unarchive notes. So instead of using the data removal request that we uh, that we used to use or we currently use for 1.0, uh, if you're an administrator or a practice owner, you have this option to archive notes, and you can restore them as well. So being a uh, an EMR system and HIPAA compliant, we're not allowed to delete notes, of course, um, but archive will remove it from view. So if you want to remove the note, you are fully in control of removing your own notes. And if you want to restore the note, you restore the note. So this is a great new option for 2.0. Uh, you also have the option to put notes on hold, uh, mark them as billed or paid, and so on, which is very similar to 1.0. Uh, as far as the action buttons on the note, so again, very similar. I can view or edit the note. So this is just the note that has already been done. Um, and you'll notice very similar um, options as 2.0, uh, sorry, as 1.0. So this should be very familiar if you know 1.0 already. And so again, we are, we did our best to keep everything very similar. Okay. Uh, actually, one really cool thing we did here is under the objective test or special test, you can actually expand it directly from here without having to open it. So this is really nice, and you can actually print it out. Uh, and give it to your patient or something like that. That's a nice option. Um, also from here, uh, you of course have your goals, recommended treatments, duration, all of that. Yeah, so for the most part, very similar to the 1.0 here. Um, also, I do want to bring um, attention to the app. Okay, so in the URL, if I click on back, so you'll see here, it's actually going to bring me back to where I was before without logging us out. Okay. So this is important because on 1.0, you did not have the option to click on the back button to bring you back to another tab. In 2.0, you can actually copy this URL and save it, and it's going to bring you right into where you need to be. Okay. So the URLs are very, very specific to which section of Hello Note you're on. So if you notice on the top URL, if I go into view edit, you're going to see here now the URL changed a little bit. Again, this is awesome because now if you need, to, for example, let's say you need support from our team, you can actually copy this URL, give it to our support team without needing to give any patient ID numbers or where you are, anything like that. Because once we open this URL, it's going to bring us right to where you are. So, so I really love that. And of course, using the back buttons and things like that is cool. Um, let's see. So renew button here, uh, same thing. You can control Planet Cares renewed, uh, um, sent to received. Uh, you can print notes. You can e-fax, of course. You can e-fax Planet Cares or the full node. So if I click fax, you're going to put in the provider. You can attach a cover letter. You know, you also have photo complete here. So if you wanted to save a message like, thank you for the referral, you can do that here as well. So let's go back to case list. So to the right, uh, also with the action buttons, you can also click on discharge case. And we have a feature called CPT setup. So this is not a popular feature and hopefully it doesn't get popular. If you, the reason this feature was built out is because insurances are big, some insurances are beginning to, on top of authorization, they're limiting you to how many units you can bill per episode. So we have this feature here where you can set up maximum units per CPT code, and I can click on the green plus, 
I can select different treatments, whatever the case is, and I can select the maximum amount of units built. So as your therapists are doing notes, uh, you're doing notes, once you reach that threshold, it's going to stop you and say, you know, you reached your threshold. So, so we, we always adapt based on insurance needs, right? So insurances are constantly changes, changing, um, including um, time in, time out for United Healthcare, for example. Right, so medic, um, like Medicare does not re- right now. It doesn't require you to put time in, time out. But for example, United Healthcare is requiring it. So we actually have a setting for that in the case settings to force that. This way, your therapists uh, are putting that. So if you get an audit, they're not going to give you a hard time because you didn't do time in, time out. So underneath here, we also have the total amount per year. Uh, so this is a button you can click on. And it's actually going to generate uh, the estimated threshold of how much you build. So this lets you know, for example, of KX modifier when it's going to be triggered. So Hello Node 2.0, just as 1.0, we keep track of the KX modifier. So once it's needed, we automatically apply it. You can, of course, uh, apply it earlier if you need to in the case settings. Um, that's up to you. But we will keep track. Uh, based on an estimation, and then we'll apply it automatically, so you don't have to um, you don't have to worry about that. So um, yeah, and then if I click on the add button on the top right, it's going to then bring me to my add case. Um, in 2.0, we actually use these red indicators to tell you what is required. So if I put in here OT 2023, you'll notice that now it's not in red anymore. So it only tells you what's required. Okay. Uh, yeah, so other than that, right now, things are all similar here. The next tab over is the Documents tab. Uh, so we went over the Documents tab a little bit earlier. You can upload different documents here um, and then pull them up, of course, by clicking Actions, click on View, and then you can re-download it um, or whatever you need to do from here. Um, and then finally, there is a signature tab. So this signature tab does allow you to click on the new button and then have the patient um, you know, put in whatever signature or whoever it is, I mean. So you can select the signer as itself, family, aid, friend, nurse, uh, and so on. There's, a, some, there's an other option as well. You select the case that it belongs to, have the patient sign or what the signer is, add a remark, save it, and our system will save that into our system, and you can pull that up for proof of visit and so on. Again, right now, a lot of insurances are not requiring it, but you know, insurances are making changes. And it's also not about insurances. You can have your own policy for your own office. And if you want to require uh, patient signatures for your therapist to get, then no problem. They can open this on, on their phone um, or on their laptop, whatever it is, and then they can, they can sign. Uh, and as, as I mentioned before, we are going to be launching an app. So the app will have an option for e-signature as well. Uh, it's also going to have an option for uh, the electronic uh, visits. So it's actually going to capture the location, the time, and all of that um, on the app. So that's going to be a nice option. So that, uh, that includes the patient information tab. Um, there's a lot, a lot that goes into here. So let's look at the next tab, which is called the Schedule tab. So for Schedule, again, very similar to 1.0, uh, you have the options for color coding different visits. You can put your mouse over the patient name to get different um, options here. So it tells you different statistics. Uh, you have the option to apply payment. You have the option to print the appointment list, send appointment reminder, duplicate this visit to another date. Uh, you can also open up patient details and case. Uh, one uh, feature that we actually uh, are going to be releasing shortly is start a note directly from the schedule. Okay, so currently, if I wanted to open the case, I simply click this button, and notice it opened in a new tab and brought me right into my, my patient's chart, right? And then I can do my note, right? So in here... We will have an, a button here to actually start a new note, and you can actually do the note directly from here, uh, meaning start it from here, and it's going to launch it in another window, which is, which is going to be nice. 
And of course, you have a delete action button. Uh, so yeah, so you can also choose different therapists on your schedule. So if you want to add another view for another therapist, you can. You can also break up the view based on month, agenda, work week, weekday, things like that. That is an option here. You can also export the, the schedule uh, onto your phone, uh, whether you have Google or Apple. You can export um, your schedule. Uh, you can't export another therapist schedule, but yours you can. Um, or you can print it as a PDF, of course, um, if you need to. We also are expanding on our static events. If I double click any open slot, you'll see here that it's going to ask me my patient, the case, who the provider is, visit type, and so on. So there is an option for static event. So clicking static event, you can do static events directly from here. Um, and now we do have recurrence for static events, which we did not have in 1.0. And we are also adding the color coding for static events, which is going to be really nice. So that's a little bit about the schedule. Um, pretty, pretty simple there. Um, as far as billing goes, so if you are using Hello Notes integrated billing platform, uh, nothing is really changing on that side. Everything is remaining the same. So I can click on claims, ready to send. Of course, it pulls up all my notes uh, that I did that are finalized. This does not include pending cosign. This does not include any archive notes or draft notes. So this way you know exactly what needs to be billed. Um, and then on the right side, you do have the audit button. Or I can press select all and click batch audit. And it's going to audit all of these claims to let you know if they, they were submitted for billing or not. Um, just as an example, I'll click on an audit button. You'll see here if it fails the audit, it's going to tell you what's missing to give you an opportunity to fix it before you submit it to the insurance. You, do, you of course, do not want to submit something to the insurance that is required. So, so we do apply those rules. We apply, of course, the modifiers for you, including assistant modifiers, KX modifiers, 59 modifiers. All of those are automatically done within Hello Node, so no need to worry about that. Um, and I will have a separate webinar specifically on billing. Um, and I do want to mention that, so if you want to do your own billing or you have billing in-house, we can, of course, support that. This is a, this is a great system for that. Um, if you, for example, want to uh, outsource your billing, we actually partnered with Athelis, which has an awesome user interface. So I actually have um, an Athelis tab here just to show you. So, yeah, they, Athelis does billing. Uh, so uh, this is, of course, a, um, an add-on feature because they're a different company, but they do an awesome job by doing your own billing, uh, doing your billing, I mean. And uh, you have a lot of different insights and analysis reports and things like that. So, so if you are looking to outsource billing or you don't know what may work for you, maybe you want to do it in-house, maybe you want to outsource, um, definitely reach out to us and we will, we will connect you with the Dallas um, so you can see what works better for you. So next option, of course, uh, we have a lot of reports. Uh, something different that we did in 2.0 is grouping of reports. So in 1.0, we just had a whole list of reports. Um, in 2.0, we, we group them based on, uh, like for example, billing and insurance reports, financial reports, and so on. So I'm going to open up a few reports, uh, but I'm going to actually open them in a new window. So I do want to mention that too. So you can actually open up different tabs in Hello Note without leaving the tab that you're currently on. Okay, which is really important because let's say I'm doing some KPIs or I want to track different reports. Right? I could just click on my middle mouse button and it's actually going to open it up. So I can open up different reports, you know, whatever, whatever it is I need. And then once I'm ready, I just go into those reports. And they're there for me. Okay, and I still have access to whichever tab I was on from before. Um, so just to go over some reports, so this is aging balance. So I can go back to whatever month I want. I also have a insurance tab, I'm sorry, insurance filter. I press generate, and it's going to show me any patients that have a balance. Um, I, can, I can also print uh, the, um, the statement directly from here. 
And uh, I know we get asked that for 1.0. So we're actually uh, working on a email statement feature as well, which is going to be really awesome. So the patient will be able to get an emailable statement without you having to, to send it to them. Um, other reports like net collection rate reports, uh, patient balance reports, posted payment uh, reports, uh, therapist invoice reports. This is a great report if you want. If you have therapists that are contractors and you want to apply different rates for them, this is an awesome report. So they can generate their own invoices and send it to you. Uh, the beauty of this report is that the data is already here. So if a therapist is working for you, you know, they generate a report, and it's only going to generate if a note has been finalized. So, and you can apply rates to their notes, and then it's going to, of course, give them a total. You can review it and pay them. Um, yeah, so those are some of those, those reports. Uh, we also have note and compliance reports, like active cases, uh, expired plan of care reports, um, pending cosign reports, productivity reports. There's some office reports, like referrals. Patient reports like active patients, patient authorization, birthday reports, patient statuses, draft notes, all of this stuff. Um, for the most part, the reports are same as what we had on 1.0, uh, but we are expanding on those reports. Um, um, and within the next few months, we actually have a lot of new reports that we want uh, built out. So, for example, here, this is active cases. Um, then we have referrals report. So I can go back to you know, whichever month I want, generate the report, and it's going to show me all my referral sources with a nice uh, chart. And notice that it's per month. I can actually switch that, and I could do it per referring source. So I can actually see who was referring me more patients within any given month. And if you scroll down, and this is across the board for all the reports, even um, this is actually in every single section of, of HelloNode, so you'll see here, it's going to give you the total number of records. And then on the right of that, you can actually switch to how many, uh, how many rows you want to see at the same time. So if I click 100, it's going to give me 100. So we didn't have that feature in 1.0. So you can load a lot more data in one. And of course, you can export to Excel uh, all of the reports and uh, use them for any tracking or filtering, whatever you need from there. All right, so next uh, is, of course, uh, we have uh, eFax integration, which is an awesome tool. So, if you, again, if, you don't, uh, if you're not signed up for it, I highly recommend it. And the reason is because uh, we allow your eFax directly from HelloNode, and then we also have something called fax status, where you can see if a fax was failed or success or whatever it is. And let's say you, let's say you, uh, you faxed a plan of care, and it came back as, like, signal busy for whatever reason. Uh, just so you know, it will automatically resend. But let's say, you know, uh, the line was busy at the doctor's office. So you can click Actions, and you can actually click Refax. Um, so that's going to be a good option. We're also going to have this option on the dashboard. So if there's any plan of care that you sent, but for whatever reason you need to refax again, because the doctor didn't sign it within 30 days or so on, you, you'll have an uh, opportunity to refax it. Uh, we also have incoming faxes. So if you do have, um, if you use our integration system here, you will have the option to do incoming faxes, and then you view that, and then you can actually share that directly to the patient's chart without having to download it, which is an awesome feature. Um, and then we, of course, have a lot of different settings, like autocomplete library. So as you're typing your note, it's going to come up. Uh, you can set up different evaluation note templates, you can save goals to the bank, you can do payer ID matching, referrals, and, uh, reminder stat status, uh, visit type. So those are, of course, available. The patient list. Uh, so I just want to show one more thing that I was asked by many. So if I, I'm just going to switch the office. So if I switch from one location to the other, you'll notice that it just relogs me in automatically. No need to no need to put in my password or anything like that. It just logs me in. I select my patient. I go to notes. Right? I go into my case that I created. I view it. And now when I go to a new note, I actually have the option 
to create a new node or a communication node and so on. So, so that's really simple uh, feature to re-log you into another office if that's what you want. So, so yeah, that concludes, oh, one more thing, just mentioned the help button on the bottom left. Of course, if you need our help, you can always click on the help button on the bottom left, put in your name, email, your question, um, and we will, we will get back to you. Uh, you can also call us, email us. Um, you know, we do our best. Um, our support team uh, does an awesome job to clear out tickets. Um, and because we're right now on two systems, 1.0 and 2.0, so in the, in the future, once everybody's on 2.0, um, everyone's going to be on 2.0, and support will be a lot more streamlined. Um, and remember what I mentioned about the URL on the top. You can take that URL, and then you can paste that directly into the how can we help you box and just, you know, state your question and we'll pull, pull up exactly where you are without you needing to give us any patient ID numbers or things like that. So that concludes the uh, system overview on 2.0. Uh, so thank you very much, everyone, um, for, for being a Hello Node client. And if you're not a Hello Node client, thank you for at least considering Hello Node. Uh, we'll be happy to work together with you soon. Um, any questions or suggestions, feedback, uh, we'd love to hear it. I know uh, we do have a q and A. I I want to leave a little bit of time for. So Lisa did a great job on answering a whole bunch of questions already. Uh, there are a few open tickets, so I'm just going to read through those and answer them. Uh, one of the questions that, uh, that was brought up was, is billing very different in 2.0? Uh, so no. So in 2.0, the billing is actually going to be, um, when I say billing, I mean integrated billing, which means in-house billing. So it's actually going to be even more streamlined because we're actually working on posting payments directly from the clearinghouse back into Hello Node automatically. Uh, so you know on 1.0, uh, we have the option to download the ERA and put it into, two, uh, into the system. So we're actually working on automating that process so you actually won't have to download any ERAs, they're actually going to flow over into Hello Note automatically. So, so no, billing is not very different. If anything, it's going to be easier. Um, and then for 2.0, we do have the integration with Aptalis if you are looking to outsource your billing. So, so that's always an option. Um, and if you have your own biller, then no issues with that as well. We give them logins to Hello Note, and they can, of course, access Hello Note from their login and do the billing from their own system. So next question is if there, uh, let's see, if there are multiple locations, can appointment reminders be set to let the patient know which location the appointment is at? Yes. So actually we have that in 1.0. So you can actually in 1.0 control where, uh, which message the patient gets. In 2.0, uh, that feature is still going to be here, uh, just not here yet. But yes, you can control the location directly from from the message. It's pretty much a placeholder. So it's just going to have like a bracket with location. And then based on the location that the patient is at uh, or, or in or scheduled in, it's going to put in that location. Uh, next question is, is an electronic signature in the works? Physically signing is very challenging for my older adult patients with neurological impairments, which is the majority of my caseload. Yes, great question. And yes, yeah, so Definitely electronic signature is already here. So if you use the signature tab and you press the new button, you can actually have the patient sign directly here. Um, so that is an option. Um, and then there is an app coming. So the app will also allow you to do electronic signatures as well. So great question. All right, next um, question is, will patients be able to access their notes on the patient portal? What is in the patient portal? Uh, so great question as well. So patient portal uh, does currently, we have the patient portal that allows the patient to input their demographics, insurance information. Um, they can schedule a visit and that can be turned on and off. So I know a lot of clients do not, um, and I know a lot of you don't want to have patients schedule. Um, because you don't want any miscommunication or anything like that. So that can be turned on and off. Um, and that's where we're going to have our schedule widget adapt directly to your website. So 
So you'll have the opportunity to control if a patient is actually scheduled versus just giving them a uh, kind of a message that says your appointment is pending. And then, of course, you can reach out to them to schedule them. Uh, so that's in the patient portal. Uh, they can view their intake and consent forms. Uh, they can do e-signature there as well. And then they can pay their bill. Uh, oh, and there's also a documents tab. So the documents tab allows you to share documents with the patient. Uh, if you upload a document into the patient chart, by default, it's not going to share with the patient. So it's only going to be there for you or whoever has access to the patient chart. Now, there, if you click on the action button uh, under the documents, there is a button that says share. And if you click share, it's actually going to um, upload uh, to the patient portal. So to answer your question about notes, so yes, you will be able to share notes as well, but you have to click share in order to do that. By default, we're not going to show them the notes. Uh, next question is, when will auth number pull the claims? Uh, so we actually have that here. If you go into the insurance tab, if I scroll down to the authorization section, uh, let me just add an insurance here because it's not going to let me add authorization unless I add insurance. So now I click authorization required, add authorization. So whatever number I put in here for authorization, as long as you link it to a case, it's actually going to pull into the claim. Okay, if you do not put a um, case here, it will not pull into the claim. But as long as you put the, um, if you put in the case name here, it's going to apply the authorization number onto the claim. The next question is, I was told that a home safety evaluation will be added. Is that on 2.0? Yes. Yeah, so, so we have a lot of uh, clinics we work with, of course, that are more on the niche side. So it could be lymphedema, pelvic health, home safety. You know, there, there's a ton of different uh, niche practices. And, and again, one of our goals with 2.0 is to be as dynamic as possible. So yes, you can create different um, templates in HelloNote now, but one of our goals is to give you the ability to create your own different um, note templates following any format that you want. So yes, that is coming to 2.0. Um, our, our goal, of course, is to migrate everyone over to 2.0, bring all the notes to 2.0 first before we work on custom, uh, completely custom notes uh, because you know, we don't want any, any issues with, uh, with migration if we have different formatted notes. Uh, but yes, definitely we will be adding custom templates, including home safety. Um, and one of the other things we want to focus on on 2.0 is being more active in the community, which means that we want you to create your own, um, like for example, we want you to create a note template and then we want you to share it, be able to share that with other users if you want to, right? And then other users can share templates with you and so on. So we really want to grow uh, a HelloNote community uh, because we are all therapists. We are therapists operated. So, so we know how important it is to, for feedback and ideas are great just to bounce around. Uh, also goal banks. If you want to share your goal bank with other practices, you should be able to do that. Of course, you don't want to, you know, there's no patient information should be in, in there, but if you have templates and you want to share it, then no problem. Uh, we do want to, to make more of an effort and commitment for that uh, once 2.0 fully launches. So next question is, does 2.0 save any information we input live or do we need to hit save every time? Uh, and 1.0 I had issues when a notes got lost if the inter internet drops. So HelloNote is a web-based system, right? So when it's a web-based system, that means you need an active internet connection and it has to, data has to reach from your computer uh, to our server. And right? if it does not hit our server because of a loss in internet, then we have no data to save. So one of, the, uh, one of our goals is to have uh, the app actually work offline, so, which is going to be great because that will resolve any issue with internet. So you'll be able to pull up the app, do your notes, and it's going to sync when you have internet. Um, however, with that being said, we do have autosave in Hello Notes. So that means if you're typing, let's say you're typing notes, right? And let's say your internet cuts off. 
So Hello Note will actually warn you and tell you loss of internet. It'll save as much as it uh, can prior to the loss of internet, uh, and it's going to alert you that internet um, you know, has dropped. So this way you'll get an indication so you don't continue uh, doing notes because your internet is no longer active. Um, so yeah, so that's really important, um, but we are working on the offline uh, app as well, which will be a really great benefit. So next question is, I heard that Go, uh, Hello Note and Go High Level will be, would be able to integrate in 2.0. Is that true, and when will this happen? Yes, it is true. Uh, we are actually working on the integration with Go High Level. Go High Level is a CRM uh, that is HIPAA compliant, which is awesome. Um, they have a growing community, and Hello Note is growing, so, so it really makes sense for us to integrate um, because Go High Level can handle a lot of your marketing efforts and things like that. So, but yes, um, it, is, it is true. We are integrating. Uh, the integration actually has started, so it just has not completed yet. So hopefully over the next uh, few months we will, we will get that live. Uh, next the question is, can we edit the eval note templates? Yes, you can. So I'll just show you that quickly here. If you go to settings and you click evaluation note templates, you actually can add new templates. Or if you click actions and click, uh, let's see here, there's view edit, it's going to open up that template for you and you can make whatever changes you want. So what's awesome about the templates is you can preload as much or as little data as you want and then pull that up on any patient. So instead of you having to write an eval from scratch, you actually can preload templates directly into the chart. So next question is follow up to the electronic signature. Are you saying that when the patient creates a signature, that signature is used on all their forms? Um, also physically signing is what's difficult for older adults. So let me answer the first question first. Um, so yes, that signature for, so let me go back here. When you go to the signature tab and you press new and you have the patient sign, right? So this signature is meant for proof of visit for that day, right? It's not meant to go on forms because forms uh, have the other. So here, let me open up the tab I had, so right here. So, for example, if a patient is doing intake or consent forms on the bottom, they have another box where they can sign. Okay, so this will get stamped on the forms. Okay, so, and remember, forms are more for compliance, so you want to make sure that the patient signs every form. Um, you, like, I wouldn't have a patient sign one time and it applied to all forms because I don't want the patient to come back ever and say, oh, I, you know, I didn't know I was signing once and it applied to every form. So I would actually make them sign every form. However, however, you'll be able to create a intake form with as much data as you want. So if you want to combine all your forms onto one kind of page, not page, but, um, but one section here, and have them sign for everything at once, that's fine. Um, so, so hopefully that answered that question. Also, physically signing is what's difficult for older adults. Is there going to be an option where they can choose a signature font and grant permission for the electronically generated signature to be used? Yes. So, uh, so if you remember on Hello Note 1.0, or if you're still using 1.0, when you do an e-signature, we actually have the opportunity for you to type uh, your name and adapt that to an uh, electronic signature. So, yes, that will be coming for patients as well. Um, it, Again, it, it does have to have um, like their consent to do that. But yes, that will be coming. Um, it's a great question, and you know um, we do have a lot of users with older adult population. So anything we can do to, to make that um, that process easier for them, we will. So yes, um, we will have an option for them to type their signature. All right. So next uh, question is: Is there a possibility for a note template only for pediatric cases? Yeah, so once we have our custom note templates built out, you'll be able to pretty much design your own uh, notes. So, you know, the notes will have any fields that you want, any boxes that you want. If you want, like, a specific box for date or a drop-down for something, you'll be able to have that. So, so, yes, for pediatrics as well, that will be included. 
And uh, looks like the last question we have is, I use photos in my home assessment notes, but the document section has a size limit. Uh, yes, so currently there is a size limit. We will be increasing that size limit. The reason it's not increased yet is because we're still uh, in our migration uh, period. So during migration, we have to be really careful with how much um, how much data we all, and how much size of data that we're allowing users to do. Once we're fully migrated, uh, I don't want to say we'll remove the size limit because then you'll be able to upload you know, unlimited size uh, because typically, um, you know, like 20 to 50 megabytes should be good enough for any notes or even videos or pictures or things like that. Uh, but again, we listen to you. So if you need more, more space, uh, more size limit, let us know. I do know we initially started with a lower limit and the last month we actually increased that limit. Uh, so if we need to increase it more, that's no issue. Just uh, reach out to us and we'll, um, we'll make it happen. Uh, again, we're here for you. Um, so any feedback you have, we, uh, we listen to when we tend to it. Awesome. So that concludes uh, the questions. And there were a whole bunch of other questions in the Q&A section. Uh, Lisa did a great job answering them. Uh, we will, so this meeting will be recorded, well, it is recorded, and it will be uploaded. So definitely I'll look out for an email once we process it, once we upload it. We'll send it over, so if you did not get a chance to listen live, uh, hopefully you can listen to this replay, and we will be having more webinars. And, um, and yeah, and uh, we look forward to completing our full 2.0 migration so we can begin on a whole bunch of new features that we have, um, that we have in store. And uh, yeah, I want to thank everyone for, for your time. I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. And we're grateful to have you as our partners in service. And if you are not a Hello No client yet, we hope to work together sometime soon. And any feedback you have for us is invaluable because we use that feedback to grow our system and benefit other clients. And that's the culture that we have had for the last 10 years. Uh, we want to do more on giving back and making sure that we are true a true all-in-one uh, EMR and practice management solution. So thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. And um, any suggestions, questions, please reach out, and we'll be happy to implement for you. Thanks, everyone. Take care.